what does a sustainable plastics business look like? Well, instead of petrochemicals, we start with waste. Why do we do that? Well, there's actually a growing supply of waste. It's either landfill or incinerated at a high cost, which means we can get it at a low cost. It's a self-replenishing, sustainable supply. And instead of a big chemical company or a big chemical factory, our technology is based on a mechanical, above-ground mining process. It's basically adapted mining technology. We're not recombining chemical molecules. Our process is much simpler. We're simply separating different materials from one another. We have much lower capital costs for the same capacity. We use less than 10% of the energy to make the same amount of the same type of plastics. For every ton of plastics that we replace, every ton of virgin plastics we replace, we save one or two to three tons, depending on the type of plastic we're replacing, of CO2 from entering the atmosphere. So we're recruited worldwide right now to build our plants for these reasons and more. And we make a product that's for most applications indistinguishable from virgin. So instead of discussions we have with our customers is of course always based on price, but it's also based on our green pedigree that we can deliver 100% post-consumer verifiable material, which means we can enjoy a more robust marketplace and higher margins. For us, it's all about supply. And if you look at the materials that we use every day, most of the materials we come in contact are actually reused in very large quantities at very high rates. There's nothing new about this. If you look at steel and aluminum in particular from durable goods, which is where we harvest our plastics, you see that the recycle rates are well over 90%. And in the general recycling world, the recycling rates for glass and paper are approaching 50%, sometimes greater, depending on which country you're looking at. But for plastics, we can't seem to break through the 5 to 10% barrier, again, depending on what type of plastic streams you're looking at overall. Now, most people would say that's because plastics are a throwaway material and they're not worth very much. Those of us in this room know that that's not the case. So we have, there's a raw material that's very plentiful, much more valuable than steel, but it's only recycled and reused at a tiny fraction of that of steel. The good news for us is that it's coming back, both for legislative reasons but mostly economic reasons, to recover the metals. These materials are shredded to small bits about the size of your hand, or in some cases smaller, to liberate the metals and recover the metals. And what's left behind is a waste product called shredder residue. Today, that is mostly burned or landfilled at extremely high costs around the world, but it's very rich in plastics. And we're the first company in the world to be able to take this raw shredder residue and turn it back into to virgin quality material for use right back into durable goods. If it were easy, there'd be thousands of our companies around the world, just like there are thousands of metal recyclers around the world. From electronics and automobiles both, we find that it's predominantly made of three types of plastics, polypropylene, polystyrene, and ABS. So today we mine those commercially, and bit by bit we're recycling more out of these smaller slivers, but we're taking the low-hanging fruit first. Now, the challenge has been separating these in a high enough purity uh, to be used back in durable goods, the demanding applications that, that Honda and other durable good manufacturers require, the demanding specifications. So it's a bit surprising that we're able to get polypropylene out of to the levels of purity required by our customers, polystyrene ABS, but that's not sufficient actually for the customers. We actually have to segregate it, not just by type, but by grade. And I'll use polystyrene as one example, where we have to separate flame retarded from not flame retarded. We have to separate extrusion grade from injection grade. That's, most people in the world would think that's impossible to do because chemically they're identical. It's just a melt flow molecular weight in, uh, difference but we're doing it commercially around the world every day.